So you're uh, really skipping out. You got it. Somehow it just doesn't seem right. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down the Christmas movies even the Grinch wouldn't wish upon Whoville. Oh, hey! Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I kidding? Of course I did. What's Christmas without a little tear? Number 10. Best Christmas Ever Here's the answer to the question, what if ChatGPT wrote a Christmas movie? That's what this Christmas movie with no Christmas spirit seems like anyway. How do you know he knows? Because I called him. You actually spoke to Santa. The fat man and I are like that, yo. Homie? The plot gimmick of misunderstanding that kickstarts all the antics in the movie is basically someone says something sarcastically, another person interprets it as something else completely, and then events cascade to the extreme. What is your problem, girl? The problem is you, Jackie. Your life is just too wonderful for her. It's constant miscommunications done in the exact same way throughout the 80-minute runtime. It's sad that though the movie is called Best Christmas Ever, the holiday serves as nothing more than background and an excuse to get corny and sentimental in the end. You saved my Christmas, Char. <laughs> you saved my Christmas. <laughs> Number 9. I'll Be Home for Christmas the song I'll Be Home for Christmas was written for a noble cause, as a means to honor the soldiers in World War II who couldn't be home with their families. The movie I'll Be Home for Christmas has absolutely no relation to the song and does nothing but waste everyone's time. Nice try, but no chance. Hmm, must be defective. None of the characters are written as if they could be real people with real motivations. And the humor is so lazy and cheap that you'd think you grabbed this from a bargain bin. Am I alive? Sir? I have never been happier to answer that question in my life. Yes, you are alive! You been asked that question before? Ah, oh, maybe 10, 12 times. And when there's no respect for grim subject matter like a death in the family, it's hard to imagine who this movie was made for. In the end, it just comes off as insensitive and totally apathetic, with not even much of a classic Christmas message about sharing and family and love. Santa, if you showed up on my doorstep in a one-horse open sleigh, I wouldn't believe you. Allie, I'm sorry. You know, I can't take fake remorse from a fake Santa making fake apologies. Number 8. Surviving Christmas Tis the season to be as mean-spirited as possible. That is the core of much of the plot of Surviving Christmas, and it makes every character in the movie unlikable in the worst ways possible. Man, this is great, man. This is the best, you guys, sitting around eating dinner like a family, you know? I always wanted that. It's just really wonderful. Surviving Christmas has Ben Affleck playing a millionaire who pays a family to let him stay at their house and be his fake family for the holidays. Yes, it is very awkward, and the movie gets unnecessarily raunchy at times. Kyle, what are you looking at? It's just it's research. You know, when I was young, we didn't sit alone in our rooms drooling over nude ladies on computer screens. To make matters worse, it suddenly shifts from a movie about a man who never had a Christmas with a family to a cringy rom-com where it comes off like the couple hates each other more than they're attracted to each other. Really, we can't even label it as a so bad it's good type of flick. Alicia, be careful with, with the car. Can we talk about this? No. Number seven, Jack Frost. This one was a major box office bomb. Jack Frost is about an arrogant rock singer played by Michael Keaton who dies in a car accident only to be brought back as a snowman. I'm home. <sighs> hey, I'm home. If this plot sounds familiar, it's because like 200 other movies have used the died but resurrected as X plot before, including for Christmas movies. The only difference is that Jack Frost is out to make everyone miserable. You almost got me killed. Hey, I saved your butt too, pal. Yeah, right. So I'm supposed to believe that you're my dad? Hey, do me a favor. Go easy on me. Had the movie decided on what tone to go for, maybe this could have worked. But to call this a comedy and end with a kid witnessing their dad die a second time? Who is this movie aimed at? Love you. Bye, Dad. Goodbye. Bye. Number 6. The Mean One 
The Grinch, but as a horror comedy? There have been stranger adaptations, but this one really got itself stuck in the fireplace flu. This time, we're adding just one twist of fate. Honey? Oh, get away from my daughter! This parody of the iconic Dr. Seuss story turns the Grinch into the mean one, a furry green monster who not only steals Christmas decorations and presents, but also stalks and kills the residents of Newville. Ugh. Yeah, the movie fails in every facet possible. It isn't scary enough to call it a horror. It isn't funny enough to call it a comedy. 20 years they convinced me I was. I was some freak. Oh, and Frankenstein eat your granny too? Oh, actually, you know what? Frankenstein wasn't the monster, he was the doc. Not relevant. To find any appreciation for the mean one, our hearts would have to exceed three sizes. Number five, the Santa Claus 3, the escape clause. Just couldn't leave the Santa Claus franchise alone after a sequel, eh? Father Nature, Father Time, Merry Christmas again. Good to see everyone here. Um, but do you really think it's necessary to call an emergency council meeting? The escape clause attempts to rope in another mythical Christmas figure, Jack Frost, who wants to steal the Santa Claus mantle from Scott Calvin. I wished I'd never been Santa at all. Happy? I am now. To their credit, Martin Short and Tim Allen work with what they were given, but it was not enough to save this movie. The escape clause is bland in its humor and fails to capture any meaningful Christmas magic in its writing. Frost, switch back with me. Now's your chance. And this is your chance to enjoy the show. Is it better than The Santa Claus 2? Debatable, but that does not make it watchable. Save yourselves. Number 4. Saving Christmas, aka Kirk Cameron Saving Christmas. If your movie is widely panned by critics, it probably is that bad. Emphasis on widely. We highly doubt there's some conspiracy among pagans and Reddit users. There's some people who would love to put a big wet blanket on all of this. They don't want us to love Christmas so much and celebrate it the way we do. Saving Christmas really is one of the most self-indulgent and outright boring movies we've seen. Cameron spends most of the movie contrasting traditional religious values to modern, more material Christmas iconography. Commercialism, greed, holiday junk, materialism, paganism, elf worship. The list goes on and on. Some people are determined to see the worst and even the best of things. It was such an egregious move that many Christians spoke out against Cameron and his movie, some even going so far as to participate in review bombing it on Rotten Tomatoes. But all this is good. All this is what it's all about. You just need to see it with new eyes. Number three, Deck the Halls. A holiday comedy starring Danny DeVito and Matthew Broderick should have worked. Emphasis on should because, well, it didn't. Who are you? I'm Buddy Hall. We just moved in across the street. Deck the Halls has the boring old plot of two neighbors finding themselves at odds with each other while preparing for the holiday craze. We need to get something straight. Uh, around here, I'm the Christmas guy. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of my thing. Uh, uh, Chris has Memorial Day, Pete has the 4th of July, but, but I have Christmas. The intensity of the feud reaches a point where it's hard to believe anyone truly cares for each other, even when the cast arbitrarily comes together for the cheesy meaning of Christmas moment. Hey, Dad, mm. wouldn't it be great if we could do this every Christmas? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, we could use some new traditions around here. By the time it's over, you'll be ready to guzzle more than just eggnog in hopes of forgetting Deck the Halls ever existed. Number two, Christmas with the Cranks. Tim Allen, Jamie Lee Curtis, Dan Aykroyd, those names carry a lot of comedy weight. But in the case of Christmas with the Cranks, it's basically a glaring stain on each of their careers. He's all right, Nora. What on earth are you doing? Are you okay? Just about nothing is properly explained throughout the movie. Why does everyone care about the Cranks skipping Christmas to the point where they're harassing them? Why should we do this for him? Yeah. 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 He's a jerk. Regardless of how you feel about Luther, I know a lot of you have mixed feelings about him now, but we're a community, and the people in a community stick together, even if one of them has been behaving for most of the holiday season like a spoiled, selfish little yeah. baby. 
Is there any other significance to Blair's role aside from being their daughter who just moved out for her career? Couple this lack of reasoning with unfunny gags and growing disdain for every character, and you have a Christmas movie that could easily have taken the top spot had it not been for one other awful adaptation. I really don't think that's possible. It's a shame. Before we reveal our top pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. Home Alone 3. Unnecessary in every sense of the word. Heads up! How did that happen? I don't know. Ouch. Daddy's Home 2 will make you resent Do They Know It's Christmas. Do they know it's Christmas time at all? Four Christmases. Not even Reese Witherspoon could save this movie. Merry Christmas, mom. stranger! God, I've missed you. Good to see you, oh, Mom. Oh, it's been so long. And you must be Kate. Yeah. <gasps> oh, she's darling. <laughs> oh, it's Thank so you. It's wonderful. so nice to meet to you. Meet. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Nutcracker in 3D, aka The Nutcracker, The Untold Story Again, when your movie consistently garners zeros and ones across the review process, you have done something fundamentally wrong. Barry and Max meet The Nutcracker. I call him N.C. for short. The Nutcracker The Untold Story is the worst adaptation of the famed ballet to ever exist. Not only does it grossly indulge in cheap 3D gimmicks, it also fails to capture any ounce of magic that previous versions have, even going so far as to ditch ballet entirely. The Nutcracker himself is incredibly creepy to look at and the familiar ballet score is turned into awful musical numbers. We would much rather suffer through the Nutcracker and the Four Realms a second time than watch another minute of this. I'm just as lost as when I arrived here. What's the worst Christmas movie you've ever seen? Let us know in the comments. Oh, are you kidding me? Jesus! <gasps> Christ the Lord is born this Christmas morn. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.